What's up guys, Sean here from Shooty School. I'm gonna put out this video. It's like a year and a half to two years old. I just spent like a half hour like relinking all these old media files because it's so old. I, after I made it, I woke up a, you know, a day later, a few days later, and I was like, there's no way you're releasing that video. You sound insane. I go so fast and so hard after the most pointless details. It's crazy. And and uh, I don't know, if, if you guys have been watching my tutorials for years, you, you probably have like a vibe of how I am and how I act and, and my teaching style and how I like to be like militant. And this is just over the top what I do in this. I go too fast and after too much stuff. And um, so when I decided not to release this video, of course I planned on like, well, I want to do a video like this in the future. So, so I'll just not release this and I'll cover this stuff. Uh, <laughs> And a less tense vibe in the future but now that easy drummer 3 is coming out um, either this video goes in the trash can or I can release it and this is my prelude to warn you and what inspired this video was um, out of the many times I've chatted with tune track support not on the forums the forums has almost been an amazing experience throughout but when I talking to their technical support I think on two occasions I didn't get a response I wanted and that's not bad on them I mean they answered my questions I just didn't like the answers and for some reason, that just fueled me into this absolute information rage that's in this in this uh, video. So, if you're already familiar with with my content and you're kind of uh, friendly with me and like to uh, watch my videos, you might get a kick out of watching it. Um, the only other reason to watch it would be is you're not going to go to Easy Drama Three, and you still do professional elite workflows, and you might learn a lot about. Uh, saving presets, backing up presets. Um, there's so much info in here. I forget what's in there. I just I go ballistic on behind the scenes stuff. So, so anyway, that's my disclaimer. This isn't my A game video, but uh, it's too bad. I. It's just funny the energy I put in this video. So, anyway, um, I don't think this will be my last Easy Drummer Two video, but it'll be one of my last ones. I think I'm gonna put out my Elite editing video which which i had a big script and i had it all scripted out it was going to take a while to put out but at this point because easy drummer 3 is here i think i'm just going to freestyle bang out an elite editing video and then call it so you know what i'm up to and uh and that's it guys so uh enjoy this rant it's just mind-boggling i don't expect to get the best feedback from this video but at the same time i bet you there's just a couple uses out there that will appreciate it rock on there's no simple way to revert Easy Drummer 2 to its factory settings, or to get your original project file back if you have replaced it already. If you want to revert Easy Drummer 2 to its factory settings, you'll have to uninstall it, remove all the Easy Drummer 2 preferences, and reinstall. If you don't want to do that but you're interested in getting Easy Drummer 2 as close as possible to factory settings, you can load the Easy Drummer 2 Modern Basic Library preset. Go to Settings, Audio MIDI Setup, out channels and uncheck MIDI out and put your outputs one and two as I have. Go to MIDI channel and select any. Go to your song track menu and make sure nothing is checked except for show straight and change your set length parameter to 200. Go to the mixer tab menu and select drummer's perspective. Go to the main menu settings and select general and select set all to default. Hit OK. And to advanced Reset Factory MIDI Database. And now you're ready to set as default project like this. This is as close as I can get to factory settings. Now, do you have a particular workflow every time you open Easy Drummer 2? A certain sound, certain features you engage every time you open the program, or maybe you've never even thought about it. We're going to learn how to set up a default project. So when you launch Easy Drummer 2, it is already catering to your preferences every time. And if you haven't watched my entire advance with Easy Drummer 2 series first, you may learn a bunch of tiny options you may not know about. I'm basically going to make a default project that I probably won't use myself, but to show you capability. A good idea for you might be to follow along and pick and choose things that relate to your creative process and go from there with creating your own default project. Saving a default project retains the same information that saving a regular project does with few exceptions. Now, setting up a default kit for your workflow. Some features in Easy Drummer 2 are saved automatically when you activate them. Regardless of whether you save in any form or not, they are always remembered. In Settings, Audio MIDI Setup menu, no matter what you select or when you select them, they will be remembered. 
If you have a preference for the metronome settings, they will not be saved to your default project. I think this is the biggest bummer. If the metronome is as important to you as it is to me, you can at least save its settings on a per project basis. Anything you toggle or activate in the main menu under settings does not need to be added to your default project. Easy Drummer remembers these settings no matter what. If you have a preferred time signature, tempo, and master volume setting, you may adjust those to your liking for your default project. I happen to like 4-4 at 120, so I guess I'm typical. If you leave MIDI in your song track, that MIDI will appear every time you open Easy Drummer 2 if you save it to your default project. If you go to the song track menu and go to track, the last five options can be saved to your default project. I like to set my track length to 50, which is the minimum allowed. It helps me keep my song track visually tighter when starting a project. This menu is covered in my advanced song track video. One of the main things you might be interested in is the library presets, which control your drums and mixer tabs, which are covered in their own advanced drums tab and mixer tab videos. When launching Easy Drummer 2, I like to have my favorite library preset from my preferred expansion pack. Let's say I like Metal Tape preset. Then, I customize the kit pieces and their properties. Let's say I like Fat Metal Kicks and Ring Smack Snare but I like the higher pitch snare that is turned down. Alternatively, I could have just selected my favorite custom kit from the kits menu. One thing that will not save to your default project in the details tab is the key button, which is unfortunate because that is a common preference among MIDI users. It will always be set to notes and not numbers, and you have to change it every time. I also rarely use the percussion instruments, so I'll disengage them to potentially get more computer resources back. This same customization happens on the mixer tab as well. I could mute the reverb because I like a more dry sound and adjust some faders and effects to complement that. The panning sliders are also available. Go to the mixer tab menu and check off your perspective preference. At this point, everything that I've adjusted on the drums and mixer tab to completely customize my kit, instrument properties, and mixer settings can be saved to your default project. If you look at the browser or search tab, which are each covered in detail in their respective videos on my channel, the preview original tempo and tempo buttons, plus the velocity slider and their settings can be saved to your default project. The tempo menu doesn't make much sense to me, but having preview original tempo selected might be great starting new projects so you can hear your MIDI files at their intended tempos for fresh inspiration. And recently I had to answer a question about the drum simply being too aggressive from someone not wanting to adjust every groove individually, so I guess the velocity slider can be pretty valuable in this case. For that person, I recommended lowering their velocity here and saving to their default project. If you leave your tap to find or song creator drop zone occupied, or your filters activated in the search columns, or even a file selected in the search results area, as well with any section in the browser tab, or even have MIDI blocks in your song track, your default project will remember all of that stuff, so you may want to clear or disengage all of that, unless you have an extremely particular workflow. One thing in this area that makes sense to me is the search filters. Like if I'm only using 4-4 grooves the majority of my projects, then I might exclude non-4-4 time signatures. One preference you may want to adjust is your sorting column fields and their order. That's handy for your preferred workflow. I enjoy seeing number of instruments column when I simply want to find a busier beat. And if you're only sorting 4-4 grooves from the filter up here, why have a sorting column for time signatures? If you go to your library presets, user presets menu, the preset sets routing button saves once you engage it or disengage it, that setting will always be remembered. Lastly, in the mixer tab, if you have hardware that is MIDI mapped to the features in your mixer, that will be saved to your default kit as well, which is really valuable. At this point, you can go to the main menu and select set as default project. Even though your library preset has a small asterisk next to it at this point, everything was saved to your default project file that we have discussed in this video, except where noted. Now I can close Easy Drummer, not save, reopen, and there's our default project we've been working on and all the settings saved. What if you made it this far customizing your kit, but realize you don't need this many features saved to your default kit? You could save a custom user preset instead where you can access it easily in the user presets menu here. A few things are this. Any selections in the browser or search tab will not be retained. 
nor will any drop zones or song track MIDI blocks be remembered. You still can't save metronome settings, but all of your settings on the mixer and drums tab, minus the details key button, will be saved. So this is probably the best place to save templates for different types of projects, but all these methods have their limitations, which is why we're covering them. You could have a small collection of custom project files instead. Everything we discussed while saving the default project can be saved to a regular project file, except one important addition. The metronome setting can be saved to a project file, not the default project. And it appears that this is the only place you can save metronome settings. I don't use this workflow, but if I wanted to save more settings than a library user preset can handle, I could have a folder on my hard drive to keep my template project files in. Though you'd have to have a pretty elite workflow since overwriting them by simply hitting save in Easy Drummer 2 would constantly change their settings in which the save as command would come in handy often. So that's three ways to save your settings and preferences when working with Easy Drummer 2 and their limitations. One last thing to note is you can save your drums tab settings instead of creating a library user preset. Right click on one of your instruments on the drums tab and go to the kits menu to save your current drum kit pieces and all their properties as explained in my details advanced drums tab video. This is really handy because when you change your library presets to get different mixer settings and effects, your drum kit also changes with that library preset you switch to. This is always a setback for me, that after I customize my drums, but then realize I want to try different mixer settings and effects. An advanced tip is to create your favorite drum kit, or many of them, and save them to your user kits in your kits menu. So when you change a library preset, you can go to the kits menu and instantly get your preferred drum kit back from the user kits menu, and continue working where you left off with just two clicks of your mouse. That's pretty efficient. As for backing up your songwriting and MIDI work, but not your sounds and settings, which we just covered, MIDI and your song track will always save in your default and regular project files. But if you're creating MIDI in Easy Drummer 2, or anywhere for that matter, you may want to add them to your user MIDI folder as discussed in detail in my advanced browser video. When you add MIDI to your user MIDI folder, it is instantly saved and written onto your hard drive. Or, if you want to get any MIDI out of Easy Drummer 2 to use elsewhere, you can drag it right out of Easy Drummer 2, or export it out of the song track here. Importing and exporting MIDI and audio is discussed in detail in my advanced song track video. Exporting an audio track for your work would be a pretty weak backup, but sending a reference audio track to bandmates that are not computer savvy is very convenient. Also, one solution to getting isolated stem files by using the solo buttons per channel and exporting. One thing I give ToonTrack props for is you can literally click and drag a MIDI block in and out of Easy Drummer 2 to and from your desktop or your DAW and instantly back up your files or incorporate them elsewhere. That's really handy. This is kind of ridiculous and I don't really have a home for this yet. I could literally have Easy Drummer 2 open in my DAW and then open a separate instance in standalone and drag MIDI from one instance of Easy to another or anywhere for that matter. Let's look at where we can access all of our user files in Easy Drummer 2 so we can back them up or exchange them with another user if we wished, or if we're doing a complete uninstall or reinstall. Let's start at the Drums tab, right click on a drum, Kits menu, Manage and Explore, or Finder on a Mac. Now Browser tab, expand your user MIDI tab if needed. Right click on your orange user MIDI folder and select Open and Explore. Library Presets menu, User Presets, and open in Explorer. And lastly, if you right click on a feature that can be controlled by MIDI, go to MIDI Learn Presets and select Open in Explorer. Here is where you have access of your MIDI presets, which is really handy if you use different pre configured hardware and select between them often. MIDI presets is covered in my Easy Drummer 2 hardware setup video. The only user created files that are not accessible are the user song structures in the song creator. Now we have four browser or finder windows open where we can access our user files outside of Easy Drummer 2. And on top of that, we can find our individual project files depending on where we save them on our hard drive. As for your user song structures and default project file, 
ToonTrack does not have those out in the open, so I won't recommend trying to access them unless you're computer savvy. If you have an external workflow with those files and can share it in the comments, I would love to learn from anyone about this. Thank you. Some quick advice about backing up for those who don't or haven't considered doing it. If your computer dies, is stolen, or your house burns down, or fill in the blank of some disastrous situations, you will lose all of your work. If you're working on anything important, or your Easy Drummer 2 settings, presets, and user MIDI is important, you should back them up. Having two instances of them on the same computer or hard drive isn't technically a backup. You need a separate hard drive. Also, if a big disaster or theft did happen, you may lose your files and local backup at the same time. So for mission critical projects, you may consider backing up remotely as well, like an additional hard drive stored at home or your office, or online storage like Google Drive, Dropbox, or many of the other options out there. These specific files we're talking about are very tiny in size. You could literally back them up in email attachments until the project in question is complete. Take a quick peek at my workflow in my studio. I have a projects drive that only has projects currently in production on it. And I have a project backup drive in which I drag my daily or weekly progress into for temporary backup. When I complete a project and know I don't have to access it anymore or anytime soon, I remove it from these drives to free up space for my next production and move the finished projects to a networked RAID drive, which does its own local backups. If it's a project I cannot afford to lose, I will back it up again with a cloud service if the project size isn't too big, or I'll back it up on another hard drive stored at a different location. Sounds like a lot of work, right? Well, it's expensive too, and I'm not pushing you to invest in it. I just want you to consider a workflow that you can afford so when a pro gig comes up, or maybe it already has, you already thought about a backup workflow for your projects. When I'm Mac-based, I really like the Lacey RAID hard drives. At least remember this when backing up. If you have two copies of something in two different locations, it's only backed up once. If you have three copies of something, it's only backed up twice, and so on and so forth. So that's it. If you learned anything new about default projects, saving, user files, presets, or a backup workflow with Easy Drummer 2 after viewing this video, please like and subscribe. Visit shootyschool.com for more info on my endeavors. Your comments and corrections are always welcome below. If you feel burnt out, take a break and come back and learn more Easy Drummer 2 with a clear head. Or if you're still ready to rock and roll, check out my next advanced with Easy Drummer 2 tutorial. I have many more Easy Drummer 2 videos on my channel. Thanks for stopping by and rock on. Come on.